Hi, everyone. This is Mary Lurson, Executive Director of the NAM Foundation, and welcome to this episode of Talking at Music Education. We are here in Anaheim, California, day three, live from the NAM show, and uh, just delighted to have a series of guests uh, as part of our podcast, sharing with you all the excitement and the wonderful things that are happening here at the NAM show. So I'm delighted to welcome Laura Escude. Did I say it that correct? Escude. Very Escude. close. Escude. Yeah. Escude. Yeah. Almost got the emphasis on the right syllable. Yes. Well, at least you didn't say eskewed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get a lot. Give, thanks, thanks for the point. Great. That yes, point, yes, yes. 95. Point. I give you 95. Right. Right. <laughs> so uh, I want to dig back a little bit in history, uh, but let's start. What are you doing here at the NAMM show? Let's just share some of the things that you're oh. doing here at the NAMM show. Oh, my show. gosh. Well, I'm so honored to have been invited by NAMM to be here. Um, this is, I've been coming to NAMM for 15 years now. Been and lurking I would around to, the I edges. I would love to tell you we about didn't know when you I were first here. started. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I performed at the NAM breakfast yesterday, which was quite an honor. Which is a really big plenary gathering, about three thousand people. And, yeah, uh, it was a it was yeah. a very you know, small gathering of people yeah, eating small, breakfast, yeah. all looking at me, <laughs> little breakfast teas, little tea <laughs> watching me perform. Right, right, yeah, right. it was it was fantastic. Oh my gosh, it was it was so exhilarating. So I did that and I've been performing at the Eventide booth because I've got a good relationship with them and use their products. Um, I'm doing a panel later on for NAM Careers and Music with Education. Our, with yeah. our Gen Next program and our College to Careers panel. Yes, I sure yeah. am. And other than that, just seeing people, meeting people, just making connections because that's what NAM is all about is yeah. making connections. And let's be clear what instrument you play. So what did you play this morning? I play violin mm -hmm. and I'm also a music producer. I yeah. do, I call myself a controllerist. I use MIDI controllers to control oh, my, my violin cool. and all the So this groups. morning with your violin, I'm sorry, I missed it because we oh, were no doing worries. our our fun little event with Bobby McFerrin. You know, just oh, like, that's, yeah. yeah, there's another name <laughs> drop on the floor. Um, but um so you're obviously amplified and then make you have your you're mixing yourself as you play and you're yep. doing all these cool things. Yeah, so. yep. It's all electric, amplified, mixing yeah. and effects and original music and live looping. So I'm looping my violin in real time and vocals and it's just very fun. It's yeah. just you. It's just me. Yeah. Just you just and me. your pedals and your Yeah, and, and my your, computer and my gear and everything. And yeah. your brain on fire. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously to yeah. manage <laughs> all that happening at the same time. So um well we'll I'll certainly be at your session this afternoon okay. and you know, the wisdom that you'll share with our mm. college students. So let's dig back a little bit in your life sure, yeah. um and you know where did the violin start for you as a child as an adolescent where where did the well, violin come into your life about six i saw a girl playing violin at church and i just fell in love with the instrument there and i begged my parents to get me lessons and they obliged even though they want me to play the, the piano um but they understood you know i took to the violin mm -hmm. and i just i fell in love with it i just kept playing and playing and um originally took private lessons private lessons right? yeah and then when i uh started in middle school they actually had a music education program so that was my first time playing with other um instrumentalists and playing in an orchestra and that was just fascinating to me you know i had no idea about you know the chair structure or how anything worked and um so it was very um fortunate to have been introduced to that at a young age and to be able to collaborate and perform with other musicians yeah and then you went on to get formal degrees in music right? i did yeah i got a bachelor's in music and a minor in business from florida state and um came out to la and got into the film scoring program at ucla extension and so i've just been very passionate about music and music competition and composition yeah. and yeah. production yeah so we talk um with you know dozens and dozens of musicians as in the course of doing our podcast. Um, and we all, almost always have to talk a little bit about, you know, the basics, right? You, yeah. You've built this really remarkable, um, you know, you're on this remarkable journey in building this career that involves all this technology, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But underneath it, you're a classically trained violinist. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like yeah. the basics, you know? Like, so simple. the question is, how do, the, how do these basics you know this this education for musicians that is, you know, centuries old, right? Mm -hmm. You know, good yeah. sound, yeah. bow technique, 
Yeah. Right. Violence an ancient instrument. Oh, not quite ancient, but older instrument. Yeah. So how did how, how does how did these worlds come together for you? How did you find <laughs> these worlds? How did you find these worlds that they could fit for the aesthetic that you wanted to produce? Mm. I mean, it was really by accident. I was in college and playing classical music and in orchestra, and um, but I always felt like there was something more for me, like. Just on the creative side? Just I mean, on the creative said, side, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be able to improvise, but I didn't know how because I'd, I'd come from... We don't learn that in classical. We, yeah. we don't learn that in classical. <laughs> no. I, mean, I think they do yeah. more now, but I, yeah. you know... Yeah. But yeah, we don't... I was classically trained flutist. Yeah. And, yeah, forget it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you I want didn't. me to do what? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. How do you play something that's not on a sheet of paper that you're reading? Um, so I, f I first struggled with that, but... Um, Really, it was just by chance. Uh, a friend's boyfriend was a DJ. He was DJing electronic music. And I thought, well, I'll go to one of these parties and see what it's all about. And at first, it was just very overwhelming. And wow, this is a whole sound I've never even heard before. And then I decided that I really liked it. And I got into the music and I started playing violin with the DJs. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, trying to improvise, but not knowing how. And just really stepping outside of my comfort zone because I realized I love this music so much. I wanted to learn how to perform over it, even if it meant just sounding terrible at first, which I really did. <laughs> so what was your first um, toe in the water? Your first, did you take like a melody that you liked and then you yeah. just start riffing around the melody and yeah. playing to a track i mean playing just to a track i mean yeah. again let, you know, let's let's give sort of a a pathway for any classical musician that yeah. maybe wants to take that step you came mm -hmm. from sort of a you know like you loved this tune right yeah and, well i mean now i would say just for any musician that wants to learn how to do this find a song that you like on on spotify or on the radio and just start trying to jam to it you know really you'll start to learn the melodies by ear once you just start just playing over it and the structure by ear, and the structure and the harmonies by mm -hmm. ear and that you start playing with the harmonies yeah. which you probably can analyze in your head because you're yeah. a trained musician absolutely right so yeah. you have to take what you know and add to it as opposed to go well, that's blocking me from knowing that right? absolutely right. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. i think you can just have fun with it you know just have fun and start to learn different patterns. And then after that, maybe step outside of the melody that's in there and try to play some notes around the melody because you know what the key is of the song now. And then take that to the next level and just add some other embellishments and really just, I think just step by step, if you start to just play over some, some interesting songs that you love, some that might be on the radio or on Spotify, then you'll get to a whole nother level. And you get comfortable and you start liking it more. And then yeah. you have to go buy a pedal. And you get, you get a pedal, <laughs> you plug it in, and you right. know, all the things. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of where you are now. You're very way out on the innovation spectrum with this, right? No. Yeah. I mean, don't you? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like to think so. You know, I've put in many years of learning this stuff and yeah. learning my craft and yeah. just I fell in love with it. And that's the thing is you, you find something that you fall in love with and you just it's not work, you know, you just continue learning. And so how do you describe your life now as a producer? Wow. What, what is yeah. that? I mean, <laughs> everyone says, I, I'm going to grow up to be a producer. And, you know, so what does that mean? Right? Yeah. I, mean, I feel yeah. peace of my life as a producer, but right. you know, we, we create things and we move things forward. Yeah. But you know, you're producing in a very sophisticated place now, mm, right? Thank you. With the music, music production. Mm. How do you define your life now in that field? <laughs> That's it's it's interesting. I do wear a lot of different hats. Um, I do a lot of production in the studio, creating music, composing music, um, playing violin on productions. Um, I also do a lot of live music production. So um, creating and designing live shows for other artists as well as myself. Um, so that's been really my main uh, thing, I think, for the past uh, 10 years or so. Just advising? performers um, or, or advising coming? performers but also going on tour with other artists to um, help them augment their live shows with the technology and um, using things called backing tracks for the shows and things like that and editing those things hmm. so i've created a company around that and uh, we do a lot of live show design for artists yeah so that the performing with technology 
is yeah. sort of taken a is still existing, right? Yeah. But parallel to that is a company that designs mm -hmm. that experience for other artists. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so interesting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of happened also by accident fell into it. I thought, well, I've been successful and I want to share my success with others who I think are amazing and talented. So I started hiring people and having them go on tours through my company and we've grown and grown and grown. And How big is your company? Uh, right three. now we're like, uh, we're about 15. Um, we're about six people that are, you know, employees and then the rest are, are freelancers. Mm -hmm. Contract. Yeah. Contractors yeah. by the show, by the gig. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Who's been the, uh, kind of the most inspiring person you've worked with to get this work moving? Yeah. Can you, can you, uh, can you say <laughs> out of school or are these, you know, I mean, probably uh, inspiring, I guess, is an interesting word. Um, hmm. Well, so I toured with Kanye West for six years mm -hmm. and that was quite an experience. And I want to that was probably the most in inspiring experience just because I got to work at that level and see what productions are like at that level and get to meet a lot of fascinating, interesting people. Again, producing backtrack and- Yeah, do, doing all the, the music production. It's, it's like live music production oh, for yeah, the show, yeah, you know? Right. So making sure that all the sounds are exactly right for every show, editing, editing the music, doing things like vocal effects and drum sounds and, and keyboard sounds mm -hmm. and basically anything that the artist or the musical director has in their mind that they want the show to sound like, it's our job to make that happen in the mm -hmm. moment. So it's because I, you know, an artist is constantly evolving and creating, and then the show the next night might have a little bit right. of a right. And they need a, a that change, they right? need that extension of their brain, right? Because the artists aren't necessarily tech, technologically savvy, I and mean, some of them are, but they've got an idea and they just want someone to make that idea happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's fun to be that creative brain that must extension have been, for someone. That must have been quite a six years. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did it yeah, kind of yeah. lay the bedrock for the business in a certain way? I mean, it gave you the kind of the legs to stabilize the business? Yeah, or, it was through know. that uh, through that work that I started getting a lot of calls. And that's how I um, started parlaying my success into mm -hmm. helping others with their success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Creating jobs and opportunities for people, yeah, which wow. is very, I'm very passionate about. Yeah. And you're still only 16 <laughs> compared to me. <laughs> I mean, really. No, no. Right? I mean, really. One, congratulations <laughs> oh, thank you. for, thank you. Um, you know, having the courage. Oh, thank you so much. Right yeah. to take places where maybe you didn't even, you didn't even know you would go. Yeah, right? yeah. It's it's been quite the journey. It's yeah. it's great to been here, be here. I mean, like I said, um, my you first said you, you've been here for you've come for fifteen years. Yeah, just so, kind of lurking around the edges, and we didn't know you were here. Well, or, kind or, of lurking. I mean, yeah. <laughs> in two thousand five was my first NAM. I just moved to LA um, and I got a job with a company called M Audio. And the next year I was actually in a booth doing Pro Tools demos. And I did Pro Tools demos for M Audio. And then two years later, I started working at a company called Ableton, was doing Ableton demos. And so I've been around. You've been in, you've been in the demos show and trenches. Doing, I have, I have, yeah. yeah. And then I, I had to take some years off because uh, of touring, you know, and right. not being around and right. know, the, the schedule's not syncing up. And I think two years ago, the Grammys were in the same weekend they as, were. The, as NAM, and I was at the Grammy, so I missed that NAM. Yeah, but, we were we were all going a little mad yeah. <laughs> that year because, uh, uh, you know, many folks had a run up on they had a run up from here on for events on Friday. They had a run up mm -hmm. here for events on Saturday. Yeah, uh, that and was of crazy. course. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, met, we have a lot of crossover. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. A lot of people coming back and forth. So. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you're going to do the Careers in the Music Summit. Is that your last gig here at this NAMM It show? is. You yeah. Know. And tomorrow yeah. I get to just walk around see and all see your old people. friends yeah right go people, look at everybody else's demos see the gear yeah exactly <laughs> i'm very excited about yeah, that it'll be yeah. fun and then what's yeah. next for you artistically and for the company yeah I'm what's lined on, up on the calendar yes yeah, so i'm right. working on a new um new album right now i'm doing my first performance in quad which is a, a spatial audio a surround mm. sound and that's going to be in march at where's Synth that going to be Synthplex in la it's a, a amazing synth convention 
Um, I'm doing all the playback on American Idol, which starts um, in March, March through May as well. And, and for uh, those of us who don't know, mm -hmm. you're doing all the playback for American Idol. Yeah, the music playback. What mm -hmm. does that mean? So well, it's um, old fashioned, any, classically and, trained and, right. musicians. So when you go to any concert and there's a band, the band is not playing every single element, right, of the of the music. And so you have to um, have something called backing tracks. You have to have a click so that the band members can stay in time. And so sounds to fill in the gaps where, you know, the album sounds a certain way and the, and the band members can only play a certain amount of those sounds, right? So that's what music playback is or backing tracks. And it also synchronizes the entire show because the shows run on timetables. So a song can only be a certain right. amount of time right. because they've got commercial breaks and all this kind of stuff. So it's very like timed out. And that's why yeah. they, they need the music playback because the band is just up there playing. It right. might be shorter or longer right, than right. The, uh, the allotted time. Yeah. So they still use click tracks. Yeah, pretty much. Look. I'm so proud of yeah. myself at this moment <laughs> because uh, as a, a musician, uh, we use click tracks, but yeah. they were all... Um, they were actually connected to a little, I hate to say this, people are going to say, where'd you, aren't you 90? No, I'm not 90, but they were on little, on uh, reel to reel tape recorders. Yeah. And then we were all connected to single earpieces that mm. looked like in transistor radio earpieces. Mm -hmm. And then we would play the click tracks. Mm -hmm. So it was now it's just the more, yeah. it's, it's the in-ear monitor. Exactly. You're all Wi-Fi Yes, up. you already know. You go, yeah. so that's what, yeah. okay. Well, I oh, hire yes. me, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still trying to figure out how to do the pedal thing. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I kind of know, but I, I kind of don't. Um, so so that's next for you. What else is next? I'm actually performing the at the Grammys next weekend. You are? Yeah. Yeah. On stage Sunday night? Uh, so I'm playing with the Grammy premiere band. And so uh, most people don't really realize this, but when you watch the televised award show, only about 20 people or so win awards. But then there's hundreds of other categories. And so I play with a band that uh, gives the awards out to all the other categories. In the afternoon. In the afternoon. Now, yeah. the one year that I went to the Grammys, again, the you know, thing just dropped on the floor again, but um, I went... Mm -hmm. First year I went to the Grammys, I went when that happened. And that was, that made the whole Grammy experience for mm. me because it's the community. It's where it's all the, that's where the, that yeah. is the real show. That I is mean, the you, real show. You've yeah. got the televised show yep. and then you've got the real show, which is the, the industry show. Where oh, in the that was there. just fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's in the af sun Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'll be there on stage doing the music playback for that's that. That's so and great. violin and electronics. And that's so great. Yeah, so you're, so you you're at the real Grammys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go yeah. this year, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be there Saturday. You're going to be at the sound check. Uh, so, yeah, I, I sure yeah, will. Yeah, because that's where I really like to go too. Sneak in the yeah. back door. And yes, 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 yes. Where I'll all the there. cables are. Yeah. <laughs> See you by the cables. Yeah, Isn't we'll this funny? The cables. This is what we really love. We really just love the how it gets done. Yeah, right? I love the behind the scenes. I, I, I have know. just such respect yeah. for everyone and the, the the crew and oh, me too. Puts these shows together. It's just such and, an undertaking. And, and what they know. Mm -hmm. And what they're able to Knowledge. do, and, yeah, yeah. So the, the logistics and so that's production. happening this week, and you've got some really cool things and yeah, yeah. other things, no doubt, yeah, on lot, the horizon. A lot of amazing. And now going. you're participating here at the NAM show in a really different and wonderful way. Mm -hmm. You know that you're kind of a product of the NAM show. I am right. I, I mean, really you came am. Up, you were, I came you know, up through the NAM show. I mean, I literally. I am just, so. Yeah. remarkable and i it's think i'm so grateful for uh, my staffer claire krieger Bowes, who found you she's amazing yeah, yeah. it's yeah. The, the remarkable senior project manager that runs our gen next program our college mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and uh you know so grateful that she helped us put these pieces together oh, she's fantastic yeah, I, yeah. I met her at a keynote that i did a few months ago yeah um and she was came right up afterwards and said, we've got to have you come. You have to be. We've got to get you up on the big stage. And yeah. you are, right? It was, yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. So yeah. any final thoughts for our audience here? About the well, you know, I think a lot of people just ask me, like, how did I get here where I am? And I think it's just falling in love with that thing, you know, that, that thing that sparks your, your joy, really. And I've just been tuning in to more into joy recently and, 
what really lights me up because there's a lot of things that come at us, you know, all the time. And there's a lot of choices that we have, um, paths and ways to go and things to do. But really, I've just been trying to quiet myself and stay more still and, and, and ask myself, what is it that I truly, truly want? And I've been carving that more and more and also not being afraid to ask for help, you know, with those things that, that aren't in your zone of genius, the things that don't bring you joy. Um, you think, oh, I can't afford to hire an assistant or I can't afford to, to do this or what, whatever limiting beliefs you might have. But I've, I've found when you start to offload those things that don't bring you joy and aren't necessarily in your zone of genius, when you get to be more in your zone of genius, then things start to really open up and it just starts happening, right? So I just encourage everyone to um, just really get still and listen to themselves and find what brings them joy and just follow that path, you know? We're just going to sit for a moment on what you've just said. That's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I love the concept of uh, every person has a zone of genius. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's yeah. uh, and it's that process of, uh, the giving one's per oneself permission, absolutely right to yeah. to embrace all that it could be. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, we're so grateful to have you part of Gen Thank Next you. at four. It's at four o'clock today, yep. right? We'll mm -hmm. be gathering. Uh, we'll have a great time with that. And thank you so much, thank Laura, you. for being part of talking at music education. And we thank all of you for being here with us at Facebook Live, live from the Nam Show in Anaheim, California, for talking at music education a podcast of the NAMM Foundation.